this is Fee Germana. So atheists are afraid of this discussion because they do not want to be challenged on what was in the beginning. They want to say that there was these particles that were magically there that collided with each other. But when you press them on, where did these particles come from? They always try to deflect the question. And it's time that anyone debating these atheists or these scientists or whoever must stay on the subject because they try to say, well, we don't know and just leave it at that. But that's not a response that we should be accepting. So you don't know how particles could exist if nothing was supposed to exist. So basically, in the beginning, just admit it. There was nothing, right? If you're coming from a scientific viewpoint, you can't start with anything at all. No particles, nothing at all. So that's where the key is. That's where they will begin to understand what this nothingness actually is because nothingness is the key to understanding the beginning because nothingness is not an actual thing so the big bang is impossible to have existed as they try to project into this discussion but nothingness is see what we got here is the actual concept of nothingness now to begin understanding nothingness you must like i said before you must close your eyes and if you think you see darkness we have to begin to ponder on what actually is darkness is it just our interpretation of what we are thinking that we are seeing is darkness simply the absence of light? It's basically the closest thing we can get to nothingness in our reality, of our physical reality. But what we need to understand is that we are observing darkness. So that's the only thing you could have in darkness is what is observing the darkness. And how could anything exist in darkness if there was nothing and everything was just darkness how could there be something in that darkness that's observing this darkness well that's where we find the key to nothingness because the op the opposite of nothingness is for something to exist so there are the polar opposites of each other and one can't seem to exist without the other so, if we remove what is observing the darkness, what do you have? You have absolutely nothing at all. And that wouldn't even be darkness, in my opinion. It would be more of invisibleness would be almost the closest word you can use to describe this. Because if you're not observing the darkness, you're, you're just there's just nothing at all. It's blank not there's not dark there's not anything because you wouldn't be there to observe it or nothing would be there to observe it so this absolute nothingness does not have the ability ability to exist because even this absolute nothingness is what we would have to consider some type of thing because you can't have nothingness because nothingness requires there to be an option of nothingness. So scientists and atheists are claiming that out of this absolute nothingness, all of a sudden we have the world just randomly all by accident, by some activity. They have to throw that out. That just doesn't make any logical sense whatsoever. But what does make logical sense is that this point of absolute nothingness requires something to acknowledge that that is an option of reality. So this is the moment that I've identified as a self-aware infinite moment that we have came to call God. Now, this moment is an actual 
event that would be eternal, the eternal moment of now. So all of our existence right now is this moment and it's happening all the time, nonstop. Although as a physical being, we've come to understand that time, you know, we, we see time and past and present and future. But in this one moment that is actually now, that's all that there really would be besides uh, multi-dimensional moments, which would be kind of like when you dream, when millions of people dream and they're in another reality. And then also there could be alternative moments all happening all at once. But then that gets a little deep and complicated. So we won't be going into that right now, but that actually makes sense as well. So in this moment of nothingness, some, there is a paradox of reality where something has to acknowledge that nothingness is an option of reality. And this would be the infinite moment of self-awareness, self-consciousness, realizing self. And so everything that exists would have to exist within this consciousness, within the mind of this consciousness. Now, this physical world, like I said, if you dream, you dream a physical world. So everything that would exist within this consciousness would be contained within this self-aware moment that most people would consider God. I mean, to me, this proves the existence of the creator. And so, like I said in a previous video, when they say in the beginning was the word, this word would have been that original moment of self-awareness, that consciousness, the word or thought of the creator understanding self and being self-aware and understanding that it, it, it exists. So out of this existence, things can dwell within this one existence. And to me, this theory makes more logical sense than the Big Bang Theory, where because, like I said, they cannot even begin to fathom or begin to explain how this whole physical world and they think this universe would have came from nothingness at all. But what I described is going back to the nothingness, but actually explaining something that makes sense out of it. I could make sense, logical sense out of nothingness becoming existence. Now, some have came to this understanding as well. And they even go as far as to say everything would be one thing within this existence. So like when you dream, you can dream a whole world where there could be, let's say, hundreds of people in that world. And who are these people now? Who are these people that are in this dream that you can interact with? Are they hundreds of people, individuals, or are they all you? So that's the deeper concept. Some religions try to take that concept and own it and claim it. Just because they do that doesn't mean that it's a religious idea. It's just an idea. And I wouldn't, you know, because when I go into this type of brainstorm, I really just like to dismiss all types of um, religious doctrines or anything. I just like to think about this stuff just, like I said, as a logical brainstorm thought experiment. So, I mean... I wouldn't dismiss that really because I've heard some people say like, okay, we're all living in our minds. So our minds is able to take um, signals in this physical world and transform it into visual objects. And we're actually living in the darkness of our mind. Our eyes are attached to our brain that can interpret light and um, see the physical objects that um, creates these holograms into our minds so we can visually see things and um, we got the senses of touch and all that stuff 
but really all that could be some type of electrical signals or whatever it is i mean this physical world might not be what we think it is you know so also like how i'm talking to you right now am i talking to you or am i talking to myself uh you know like is every like i said with the dream hypothesis where you could have hundreds of people in your dream are they talking to each other or is your mind talking to itself and your mind is living is in a world when you're dreaming where hundreds of people could be there you could have several conversations with other people but is your mind working out these conversations with itself so would it be similar in this world where you hear people talking you hear you can be in a busy lunchroom and hear a lot of conversations going on all at once is that kind of like the mind where physical embodiments of thought and the concept of being contained within the mind of god so look i'm gonna leave a link if you want to do more research with me on this topic i just wanted to break this down because i've made several attempts to break this discussion down and i felt like i wanted to revisit this concept and see how it all comes out you know as far as going over all the information again and seeing if um if it leads to any new ideas and brainstorms so like i said i'll leave a link in the comment section if you want to do more research with me on this topic thanks for tuning in i'm also going to leave links to my free email newsletters my social media my other channels my feed your mind store and much more i'm also going to leave links if you would like to support this channel you can donate as little as a dollar to help keep feed your mind online your support's going to help me get much more documentary style videos i also have a membership button here on youtube so um yeah, that's about it for today. So, like, like I said, thanks for tuning in. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. This has been Feature Mind signing off.